Hello and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In today's video, we're going to explore the concept of dynamic widget creation in Tkinter. This is basically the idea of generating and destroying widgets during the runtime of our application. Normally, our applications are static. So when we create a Tkinter window, the widgets that you create are static. They're constant throughout the duration of our Tkinter application. Now, we can create new windows, but those new windows themselves are static. So I don't really count those. So we're gonna basically be exploring how to create and destroy widgets within a window. So like, uh, you know, create a new frame with a bunch of widgets inside of it. That's what we're gonna explore in this video. Okay, so we have here the code for a basic form. Okay, this is our form. Now, the goal is, uh, this is a very basic form. There's barely anything inside. Uh, but what we want to do here is basically when we tick this checkbox, I want to show a few extra fields, okay? I want to have, you know, dynamically create a new a new field over there, okay? Now, you must have seen this, right? In forms online or something that uh, they may be asking you a question like, are you a foreign resident? Or are you, uh, you know, if you're filling in a tax form or something like that, or if you're applying for a scholarship and they might ask you like, um, you know, do you have this, this, or something like that? And then if you tick yes, then they may ask you some extra questions. And those extra questions, the input fields for them are generated dynamically during runtime. So that's basically something that we're going to be doing in today's video. Okay, so let's begin. This is actually going to be a lot simpler than you thought. Okay, it's actually not that complicated. So just to show you the code, here's the code for our uh, the main part. Okay, we have the name and the email over there, which can be considered the main fields. Then we have this check button for our optional details. And then we're gonna connect this right now. Let's just define the function for it on click. Okay, we're gonna leave that empty for now. Okay, just gonna come down here and connect that. Okay, self.click. All right, now here we are. And here's our additional section, okay? I've already defined this beforehand because I don't want to waste time. We have the email and the address. These are, we are considering these as additional fields, okay? So we have them here and we're using the grid layout pattern. All right, now our goal is to basically pack this frame in because look, currently you've noticed maybe that this frame, I've created it, but I haven't packed it. That's why it's not showing up. If I actually do this additional section dot pack and typo, okay. If I do this, it's actually going to show up. Hold on. All right, hold on. What's up? Oh, okay. Bad habit of mine. I use classes so often that. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, it's shown up over here, but that's only if I pack it. What we're going to do is not pack this. We're just going to define it. Okay, we're going to create these widgets, but we're not going to insert them into our window. We're going to insert them into our window only when this check button is clicked. All right, that's our goal over here. So basically when this function is called. Now I could just put this in here, okay? And when I click this, oh. All right, hold on. That is also pretty dumb of me. Again, I've been using classes way too much. Okay, so see, I clicked on this function. Okay, I clicked on the check button, which triggered the function, which triggered this, you know, it got packed. So this is showing up now. That is actually, we just dynamically created widgets. Okay, we dynamically created some content right here. Now, obviously, we need to make a way for us to remove this. If I unclick this, it's still going to be there. How do we remove that? Well, we're going to take the value of this, okay? We're first going to find out what the value of this thing is. This is the variable that's connected to our check button. So if I click on this, it, it becomes one. If I click on it again, it becomes zero and so on. So what we're going to do is that if it's one, okay? If it's one, then we're going to pack it. L if, if it's, zero, what we're going to do is reverse the packing. 
okay? And this is called pack forget. So basically, we're gonna forget, we're gonna make take enter forget that it was packed, and it's basically gonna undo the effect of that packing, okay? So if I click this now, and I click this again, it's basically gonna remove it, and that's all there was to this. It's pretty simple, right? But obviously, we need to discuss a few more things just to properly cement this concept, okay? Now, I'm just gonna, before I do that, I'm just gonna fix this a bit, okay? Because it looks kind of bad, okay? And now it looks a lot better, okay? We filled in the x axis, all right? Now, there's one issue. This is a pretty common issue that comes up, and you need to know this in order to properly, you know, manage the layout of your windows. If I create a new button, okay, and I created this button over here, okay, notice the location. We have our main stuff, okay, the main fields. Then we have the optional fields that have been created but not packed. And then we have the button which we did pack. Now, if you are familiar with how pack works, it works vertically and it stacks. So when you create the first one, uh, the first frame and then pack it, it goes up there. You create the second frame, then it goes below that frame and then so on. It stacks vertically. So when I create this now, so we can see the button over there because I packed it. But when I click on this button, sorry, when I click on the check button, this is gonna show up down here because it's being stacked vertically. First we have these fields, then the button was packed, and then this was packed. So it comes in at the end. How do we resolve this problem? Well, the easiest solution that I've seen for this is to simply create a wrapper frame. All right, we're gonna create this wrapper frame and we're gonna pack this wrapper frame. And I'm just gonna take this, okay, and put it over here to maintain the fill parameter. Now what I'm gonna do is replace this over here. Now, can you see what I've done here? I've created a new frame and then packed that frame in there into our taking care window. Cause now when we run this code, let me just show you it first and then I'll explain again. When I click this, it's gonna show up in the middle as intended. Why is this happening? Is because we created this frame, this wrapper frame, and we placed it over there. So regardless of whether this button is on or off, that frame is still in there. And we can prove this by just using the background parameter and turning it into blue. So you can see it, see it there. The wrapper frame is right there. It's just invisible right now because there's nothing inside of it. So when I click this now, it basically gets created inside that wrapper frame, okay? And then when I remove this, the wrapper frame, uh, all right, that's another issue actually. That's another uh, weird thing that can happen with uh, this, because now the window has been resized and it's, you know, like that. To resolve this problem, we're basically gonna manually reset the size of our wrapper widget, okay? So we'll do config height is equal to zero over here, which basically I think sets it back to its default setting, okay? And this is not gonna work, actually, because what I'm doing here is that if we turn it off, set the height to one, uh, okay, let me just test something. Oh, it's working. Great. Okay, so basically what's happening here is that when I set the height to one, it basically, you know, becomes one pixel tall, so that achieves what we want to. Height is equal to zero, is not what you think it is, all right? If I do height is equal to zero, it's not gonna make it disappear. It's actually gonna reset it, I think. Yeah, there you go. You can see that right here. Height is equal to zero, I think, gives back control of the height and width to the widgets inside of it. And there's some issues like that. It's kind of complicated. I don't fully understand it myself, but this is what we need to fix that issue. Okay, so hopefully the, you guys learned how to, you know, create dynamic content in Taking Care today. I have another video that's going to come out uh, that is related to this video, dynamic content creation. But instead of dynamic widget creation, we're going to take a look at dynamic screen creation. So that's going to be pretty cool. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. And I'll see you guys in the next video.